There's been this narrative that's been out there when it comes to AEW for the past two plus years. We all know it. And it's only ramped up in recent months, recent weeks, and especially, you think, exploded all over the place after All Out on Sunday. How AEW is different than WWE. How AEW is real wrestling, unlike WWE. How AEW is for the fans, unlike WWE. How AEW is hip and is doing all these great, fantastic things, unlike WWE. They're loyal, hardcore, sheepish fan base just can't but help themselves to give this company reach arounds and happy endings galore. And to be clear, when I'm talking about the hardcore loyal sheep fan base, I'm talking about all the alleged wrestling media. I mean, talk about the fans, fans. Just the fans in the wrestling media. My God, are you kidding me? And, you know, I've talked plenty about how AEW needs to kind of stay in its own lane and focus on their own thing. And don't be worried about the competition. You're trying to play the infinite game here. Don't be basing yourself off of what another company does who's somewhat in your same field but tries to be something different, even though they really don't. Um, stay and manage your own house. Get your own stuff in order. Do your own good things. And let that bear the fruits from your labor. Don't sit there and be so obsessed with this or obsessed with that. Like, it's kind of one of those things of who lives in whose head rent free. A lot of times is who wins the game. But clearly, this AEW versus WWE competition thing isn't going away. This AEW WWE side by side comparison. It's only going to continue and grow in the months and probably years to come. And, okay, we want to play that game? Let's play that game. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts! Because God knows we need a much less biased voice to talk about some of these things when it comes to AEW and WWE. Because there's way too much bias, way too much confirmation bias, way too much recency bias run amok here, it's fucking ridiculous. Because from where I sit, and in my humble opinion, I don't see what the hell the big difference is. What's so different between AEW and WWE? What truly is so different? Billionaire owners? Check. Tony Khan's net worth, I think, is a little over $7 billion. Vince's is reportedly like 1.116 billion, which I would argue is probably a little underreported. But billionaire owners, check. Match heavy presentation, lacking emphasis on characters and storytelling. We certainly know that is true of AEW, and it is of WWE as well. Really, it's otherwise? You know better. Let's be honest about shit here. A reliance on big names to get attention. We see this pathetically with the WWE to, oh, we can't sit there and garner fans' interest. We can't build new stars. So let's bring back a Cena. Let's bring back a Brock Lesnar. So we know WWE does that. But AEW's doing that shit too. CM Punk, Adam Cole, Daniel Bryan. Big name being relative here, of course. But they rely on those big names for the shock value to generate interest that in a lot of ways their existing product doesn't. Same as WWE. Largely unable to create their own young main event stars. AEW? Check. WWE? Check. Now do you say that about WWE? Oh, I can see the flaming keyboard figures of fire right now flaming away in the comments. Am I the asshole? No. Because I'm stating truth here. And you damn good and well know it. And really, you want to transcend truth, go straight to facts. We're just talking about an AEW All Out show that had a 47-year-old Christian Cage in the main event wrestling for the world title. The, one of the two big reveals at the end of that match was a 40-year-old Daniel Bryan, who had just main evented WrestleMania a few months ago in WWE. So you're putting him into a main event spot basically from the beginning. Another featured match featured a 50-year-old Chris Jericho beating... One of your top young heels in the company. Another one of your matches featured 
The 43-year-old hometown guy returning back to wrestling, wrestling his first pay-per-view match in seven and a half years, in CM Punk defeating one of your young, hungry, upstart future stars in Darby Allen. I'm not wrong. I'm going to piss some of you off because you know I've hit you to the core because it's true. You can try and throw in all these other semantics, but bullshit on all that. Same AEW All Out that had a 49-year-old Paul White wrestling a pay-per-view match. Give me a goddamn break here. So they're largely unable to create their own main, young main event stars. And you say, well, what about AEW with Hangman Page? How many world titles has he won for the company? Darby Allen, same question. Look at the history of their world championship. What is it? Chris Jericho? John Moxley? Kenny Omega? So two EVPs with a Moxley largely associated with WWE mixed in. Come on now. Company that's unable to grow their core audience? Clearly the case with AEW, clearly the case with WWE. Over-reliance on older, more established names. Well, I just talked about that. We well, you know that's a fucking major problem with WWE. It is for AEW too. A roster that's too big with too few that actually stand out. Pfft. WWE, yes. AEW, God, yes. Got about probably two to two and a half times the roster they actually freaking need for their main shows. A roster that skews older? This is a problem for both companies, yes. That doesn't mean once you reach 35 or 40 that you can't go. It doesn't mean that you can't still be a big deal. You can't be a star. But you don't want to have too much of your talent in that age bucket because that creates present and eventually, especially, future problems. Both companies have a big problem with this. A fan base that features a lot of sheep always defending and excusing things to the nth degree even though it might not feel like it, you don't see it sometimes. WWE certainly still has that. And we sure, sure as hell know that AEW does too. A fan base with some unhealthy behaviors and some really bad things that they do. We're talking about wrestling here. So both of these companies certainly have that. Two weekly primetime cable television shows. AEW's got Dynamite and Rampage. WWE technically has three if you throw in NXT. But I'm talking main roster stuff. You've got Raw and SmackDown. So they're the same there. Multiple weekly secondary shows available online. We know Dark Elevation for AEW. You know, if you want to count being elite series on YouTube. So yes, WWE, certainly. With NXT UK and Tool 5 Live and all that other shit. We know that's true. NXT UK, so on and so forth. Working relationships with smaller promotions. AEW certainly has that with Impact Wrestling and others, and we know WWE does with companies like Evolve and Progress and so forth. Heavy, pre pre uh, excuse me, easy for me to say. Heavy presence of talent located in the Florida area? Well, we know the answer is an obvious yes for both of these companies. Maybe one difference is that AEW is actually stationed out of Jacksonville, Florida, but where does a lot of the talent live, reside, etc.? That's their home base, it's fucking Florida. Talent that's overly sensitive to any criticism or feedback? We know that's true for both of these damn companies. I'm not here to say one is worse than the other. Because they're both really, really bad when it comes to this. And if you're going to say, well, the leadership of WWE is much less open to criticism than an AEW is. Are they really? Like, really think about what you're saying there. What evidence do you have of that? And especially if we're talking about AEW, like, how would you even think that wrestling media would even be questioning or criticizing them? I mean, come on. Let's connect with the reality a little bit. Give me a fucking break. You've got media that's more worried about cozying up to the company versus actual fair reporting and calling them to task. Oh, well, we know that's a reality for fucking AEW. But let's not forget, that's still a thing for WWE too. You got a lot of people out there that would still like to get a job with WWE and tailor their coverage to be very friendly, very kind, very non-threatening in a way to a potentially appeal to WWE. So we certainly see that. You just might see more overt, obvious examples with AEW, the Meltzers of the worlds and the Alvarezes of the worlds. Those are more overt and obvious, but let's not pretend like this doesn't exist for both companies. A bad history with failing to prominently feature black wrestlers in a respectful and productive fashion. AEW. 
It's all egg white wrestling as far as I'm concerned. Yes, a lot of shorter history as a company, but outside of the ladies, like when you look at the men and you look at the champions, that history even so far is not fucking good. If you have to ask, well, who would you fucking feature? You're part of the problem because you wouldn't ask that question about so many of these other white wrestlers that have gotten pushed. Like, what the hell is so special about a Jungle Jack Perry where he's getting pushed to the nth degree compared to so many others that are black or white or Hispanic or Latino or whatever? Exactly. And if anything, recent history, at least WWE could point to, hey, our two world champions, one's a black man and the other one's a Samoan, and up until SummerSlam, one of our black female champions was a freak of black woman too. AEW, what you got? But in general, both. Really bad history. Really bad. A select few being very prominently featured overall. AEW, talking about the elite, the EVPs. We know this is true. WWE, you still have matterings of breakfast club business in there. So yes. And even when you look at WWE and some of the names they choose to feature, regardless of if there's value there or whether they get a return on it or not, it's true for both companies. They have plenty of fans that are former talents who like and former talents that like to criticize WWE. Well, we know AEW's got that and so does WWE. Again, what the hell is the difference here, people? Daniel Bryan leveraging himself to a main event spot in 2021. We know he did that with WWE, see WrestleMania. He's done that here with AEW too. The best, by far, by far, best politician in the United States of America at this present time is Bryan Danielson. Nobody's close. Bryan Danielson, 2024. Because if I look at how well he leveraged himself in 2021 and politically positioned himself into notable prominent places, whether they were deserved or not, I say that might be somebody I'd actually want to run the country because I have some feeling of confidence that he knows how to be a politician and knows how to fucking get shit done, if for no other reason but for himself. Like, you look at all of these things. There's no difference. Or the differences are so minuscule, it's basically the same damn thing. It's within a margin of error, if you think about it, from a political polling standpoint. I mean, honestly, what are the actual differences between the two companies? Pay-per-view business models are different. That's true. One company does a better job of featuring their women more prominently and consistently, and the other is AEW. That's true. One more closely embraces wrestling, and the other one is WWE, and they try to be ashamed of it at all stretches. That's absolutely true to a pathetic level when it comes to WWE. One keeps releasing talent, and the other one is AEW who keeps signing talent. That's absolutely true. One is new, and the WWE is the old and has far more name and brand recognition for all that means good, bad, or otherwise. That's true. Like when you really truly sit down and look at this and you remove your own bias and your own feelings and your own emotions, which I cannot wait to see how much of a disaster area the comments might be on this video because so many people are unable to divorce themselves from those feelings and passions and emotions to take a more objective, logical look at this. All this talk about how much different AEW is compared to WWE. I say, excuse me, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about because on so many different levels, just the things that I named and listed out here, not even talking about other things that I haven't yet, they're basically the same. Just because one's got a fresher cone of paint, just because one is newer, just because one pretends to be different and you want it to be different, doesn't fundamentally make it different. You just don't have the same kind of battle fatigue, shell shock that you do that's associated with WWE, that they've absolutely merited in concern with all the dumb shit they've done from a creative standpoint over the past 15 to 20 years. But let's not sit here and pretend like AEW is some massive change in the wrestling culture. Let's not pretend that AEW is some seismic shift in the presentation or landscape of professional wrestling because as I just pointed out on so many different damn levels, they're the exact same. Are there some differences? Yes. I also called those out. But the similarities are much greater, much deeper, much more vast than the differences. So if we're going to keep comparing AEW and WWE, then let's do that. Let's have an honest dialogue and conversation about how at the end of the day, these companies are a hell of a lot more alike than any of you, any of you, would like to admit.